for the red duster, and uh, that's a pretty ridiculous statistic. So I imagine the efficiency equation, speed, and whether one is ever on. Like you're saying, the at the end, I'm going to go over the components of elongation so that you're not confused between stretch, creep, hysteresis, and all that will be explained. But when you get so much more elongation before it breaks versus something you used to have, which had very little elongation by comparison before it breaks, there's a whole world of symphonic tactile. Oh, absolutely. That absolutely. In the and these are going to water to one part stain, take it on a polypropylene rope like our Hempex, dip it, hang it out to dry. 45 minutes later, you've got a tarred line. Uh, now Wilson. <laughs> Yeah, it's a. It works. How many people here have ever seen a wooden spar that? No, I'm talking about a contemporary laminate, but a traditionally built multi-part spar. Right? Where would you find those? You wouldn't necessarily find those on your coasting spar. So if we have a multitude of shrouds, widely spread, right? We still have a nice big spread, easing load throughout the hull because we had a good idea. There were a lot of rules of thumb about the strain that each of these components was taking. But we were not doing high aspect ratio engineering where a rig like this may have one teeny tiny point that is bearing all that load because some engineer calculated it. Some of these questions I don't think have really been asked. Listen to the ship. Because the ship's going to tell you when it's tight or when it's over tight. Look at the ship. An incredible film that's available to the public, I think through the Department of Defense or the Navy Department, it's called Synthetic Snapback. And when you see that film, you'll know what I'm talking about. It shows a line snapping and a denning a five inch gun mount. Uh, there's a commander talking about losing both of his legs, seeing one fall off the ship back and one spin over that way when the line cut two legs off. If a check can be allowed to uh, to self-drain, then... <laughs> but her mass construction is essentially sections of pipe that taper at the very top, and there's a diaphragm in between each section, and there's a drain hole right above the diaphragm. And we audio gauged them in 2009, and we were amazed at you know how integral the, the structure of the And what I think about is people putting bales on spars and they just drill a hole right through the spar, relying on the wall thickness of the spar to bear the strain. And you need to reinforce that. You need to put it in some sort of... A lot of people will, will try and follow it down. Let's figure out that. We know this is strand number six. It's going underneath the pub here. want to make sure that they, they don't have to take the pimple quite close to the playing up. By going clockwise like this, it's actually going to start opening up down here. When it's at an angle, the opening here is a lot less than when I go down. So start out with your name? Sure, Abby Iverson. And where do you work? I work with Ocean Classroom Foundation. What are a few of the boats that you've worked on? I have worked on uh, Schooner Pioneer, Letty G. Howard, uh, Quite a Baltimore II, Westward, um, Spirit of Massachusetts, Harvey Gamage, and most recently Amistad. <laughs> All right. And um, what are you doing today? Uh, today I am attending the um, rigging workshop part of the Tall Ships America conference. And do you feel like you've been learning quite a bit this morning? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Right. 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 Right.